my 19 wonderful subscribers. Welcome to The Daily Chase. I'm your host, Chase Victorson. And it looks like we've got two shows almost in one week. So that's super exciting. We're moving in the right direction. Hoping to get to two shows a week on the regular and eventually three shows, maybe every day. We'll see. Still working it out. Anyways, let's jump right into it. Former CNN anchor Don Lemon is in the news again, this time after having briefly had a podcast on the X platform. Mr. Lemon was fired after reportedly asking for ridiculous things, including a free Tesla Cybertruck and use of a private jet as part of his contract. Since his firing, Don's manager has said that he will be participating in a fundraiser that helps raise awareness of causes near and dear to Don's heart. The name of the fundraiser? Lemonade. Catherine Scalia is in the news again. You may recall that Scalia was busted for prostituting herself from her hot dog truck, aggressively asking people if they wanted her to touch their wiener while she handed them their hot dogs. She would then allegedly drive her hot dog truck to the meeting spot if they said yes. Scalia was ultimately arrested for not having permits to sell hot dogs. Now, I think this woman needs a new career, and I'm pretty sure that Oscar Meyer is hiring for a new driver for the Wienermobile, so you might want to send your resume in. According to experts, Generation Z, or people under the age of 30, shown here enjoying life, may be approaching their midlife crisis era, which doctors attribute to the internet and social media. You see, while boomers were traditionally out fishing, golfing, or otherwise being human at this age, Gen Zers, shown here celebrating a surprise birthday party, really only know what it's like to see other people do such fun activities. Also counting against them is the fact that they tend to panic in the presence of other real people. A Texas man has miraculously survived a complicated medical ordeal, beating the 4% odds of survival the doctors gave him. This whole ordeal started when the man attempted to remove an ingrown hair from his groin area, which is why I only allow my wife to shave my back every three days. Aaron Taylor Johnson, the actor known for playing kick-ass and soon to be James Bond, has defended the 23 year age gap between him and his wife, Sam, saying, quote, what you gotta realize is that what most people were doing in their 20s, I was doing when I was 13. And what most people are doing in their 40s, my wife was doing to me when I was 13. When asked why she married Aaron, Sam said, I married him because I like being a cougar, which begs the question, what do you call a male cougar? pedophile, I guess. A suspected squatter who allegedly took over a million dollar queen's home is now subletting space in that home to the state of New York. When asked how the state could have made such an egregious error, the governor said, quote, we just have too many migrants and we need to find places to store them. Richard Gere has purchased Paul Simon's Connecticut estate. The music icon and his wife sold the home, which had been on the market for several years, at a nearly $6 million loss. Gear finally agreed to purchase the home, but only after Simon got the town to rezone it for animal breeding. However, PETA apparently is contesting the sale, so we'll see if this actually goes through. A patient has received a kidney from a genetically engineered pig in a medical breakthrough that could end dialysis. In the operating room next door was an Asian man and a horse, but it's not clear what organ was being transplanted. Planet Fitness stock has plummeted after a woman's membership was canceled for taking pictures of a man in a woman's locker room shaving. The man, seen here posing for his membership, reportedly walked into the locker room, scratched his balls and said, I think I need a shave today. Transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney has released a new song titled Days of Girlhood, which is all about what life is like for a girl. Man, I remember the days when people thought T-Pain using auto-tune made him a phony. 
Artificial intelligence is being used to help families determine when and what care will be needed for their elderly family members, taking into account things like their medical history and illness. While the AI is not perfect, starting to scatter significantly after you get more than one year out, it does have a 100% success rate at guaranteeing that elderly people will need to wear diapers. Former President Donald Trump is reportedly ramping up his fundraising efforts after it was revealed that he's lagging behind President Biden in cash on hand. Although, to be fair, President Biden does have 81 years of random change in his pocket that he's been saving up for just this moment. Staff at a Virginia wildlife center are pretending to be red foxes as they care for an orphaned fox kit. This move has prompted cries from an animal rights group claiming that the wildlife center staff are, quote, grooming the orphaned kit to grow up to be a human. Karen Cashbaum and her accomplice, both pictured here submitting applications to Playboy, is alleged to have driven a dead elderly man's body to the bank to withdraw money from his account. Ironically, they were discovered only after a teller who had just happened to watch Weekend at Bernie's for the first time served them. A 450-pound pig named Kevin Bacon escaped last week from his pen in Wisconsin. Apparently, the pig became frustrated with the lack of cookie variety, saying that his owners only fed him Oreos. Kevin Bacon was on the loose for several days until authorities were finally able to track him down to an abandoned warehouse where he was found dancing away his frustrations. His owners have stated that this time they will make sure he cannot get his foot loose. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Minette has banned musical horns after videos posted to social media show people having dance parties as trucks pass by playing musical tunes. Personally, I think if we could all have a dance party every time a horn was honked, the world would be a much better place. An English women's Premier League soccer game between Arsenal and Chelsea was delayed when the teams came out of the tunnel wearing the same socks and had to go change. This was yet another blow to the women's sport who has struggled to find a significant following for their matches. However, the good news is that they did make the cover of People magazine. A Greek police officer with 225 pounds of marijuana in his patrol car was arrested after a chase. It was a very slow chase, but a chase nonetheless. Daphne Litteris, a mom who has given her son a, quote, beautiful family name, claims that cruel bullies have targeted him for his name, and some adults have said that they feel sorry for the kid. Personally, I don't really understand what all the fuss is about. I mean, the kid's name is Mike. Mike Litteris. Not sure. Facebook has resurrected poking and Gen Z is in love. If you recall, poking was all the rage with Facebook's original users when Facebook first came out with the ability to poke your friends. You could flirt with somebody, get their attention, annoy your friends, or even start a poke war. Facebook is said to be also trying out other ways of flirting that original users used to use, including hair pulling, name calling, and actually talking to people in real life. The United Nations Security Council has failed to pass a U.S. drafted resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza after two permanent members, China and Russia, chose to veto it. The countries haven't been entirely counterproductive, however, nominating two countries for temporary seats on the Security Council, the islands China has been building in the South China Sea, and the newly formed country of Gonorrhea. Hershey's Chocolate has announced a new ad campaign for their candy bars, signing several multi-year deals with athletes and celebrities, releasing their first ad for Mounds and Almond Joy. And finally, Vladimir Putin has been re-elected in Russia, which really doesn't surprise anybody. But what is surprising is that his opponent got 35% of the vote, while Putin received a whopping 110% of the vote. Good for you, Vlad. Well... That's about all I know. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, mom, if uh, you see me, I'll leave the light on for you. We'll see you guys next time.